Welcome back everybody. In today's video I'm going to show you how I rework used chips that need to be uh, tweaked for the soldering, so retaining chips basically. What does that mean? Uh, you know, usually when you pull a chip off a board, uh, if you go slow enough then the surface tension makes it so that there's enough solder on the pins that you can just reuse it right away. But if, uh, like I did with that one, if you mess up or when you're about to drop it on a new board, you slip or your you know tweezers slip or whatever, then chances are you're gonna lose some solder. And that's exactly what happened with this chip over here. So this is a used chip uh, that looks pretty good. And as I was about to put it on the board that I'm trying to fix, then I uh, got the shake or whatever and I slipped and I dropped it sideways a little bit and so uh, you can see on the side here on the right side pin uh, 456, 9, 10, 11, 12 and this last one 16 could all use a little bit more solder they're like really flat looking right now and you can tell uh, since they don't uh, they don't reflect the light the same as the other pins so, uh, so yeah so I'm gonna show you how I do it so in order to do it I use a technique that I called spikes and balls all right so i got uh a a micro tip soldering iron that's perfect for that and so what i do i just put a little bit of solder on it and then i go over the pins that need some solders on them so you can see i stay on there I stay on the pin for like a second or two and then I pull up and that's way too much and then uh, yeah some solder stays on the pin and makes a little spike so that is the spike part of the spikes and balls technique and you might be wondering why I do that and why I don't just you know you'll see You'll see some people like come in with their, their solder wire and try to add the solder to the pin as you would like typically. Uh, you know, for me that doesn't work really well, but I feel like it's a little crammed in there space wise, so I just find it easier that way. And with that technique, you can actually put on more, more, <clears throat> excuse me, more solder on the pins than you would be able to only by using surface tension. So. Uh, to me, that, that works really well. So let me just finish. I'll retouch those last pins on the left too. Because why not? Okay, maybe we do this one. And usually the slower you pull up, the more solder you're going to have stay on the chip. Okay, so... Let me show you what it looks like, and hopefully, hopefully you can tell. Yeah, there you go. So that's I actually didn't realize I missed that third pin there. So I'm gonna go ahead and redo that. But this is what it looks like basically, right? So this is the spikes part. And let me just zoom out again. Okay, so back to third pin. And when I do that, I don't want any flux on there compared to, oh shit, compared to, uh, you know, your usual soldering job. You want flux to have everything flow. Well, right now you don't want to have everything flow. You want everything to be kind of a little bit on the dirty side even so that you have more solder stick there. Okay, so that was the spikes part. So I'm gonna switch iron real quick. So now I have a, uh, a bigger bigger iron, as you can tell. And uh, Oh, and I didn't do the other side because they all look fine to me. So, so I'm gonna get uh, repositioned like this. So now the, the side with the spikes is towards the top. And I'm just gonna add a tiny bit of flux for heat transfer
and push that towards the side and then just use my solder to my soldering iron sorry to put some heat in it and as you saw this one looks a little weird as you saw all the spikes are have now become balls so again let me zoom in on you for you guys yeah there you go so you can tell uh, some of them had more solders than other right so these three um, this is probably actually the, the amount of solder you would want usually like all these ones right here that is more than you need and uh, some of it is gonna squeeze out and it, it might even bridge two pins together so um, yeah so it's all a matter of uh, gauging how much or how big to make your spike and how much solder is gonna stay on the pins as a result of that. So, so here I am scratching or flaking off some old flux because it's easier to do than clean it up. Let's give it a quick alcohol clean. And there you go, here's your final result. So now that chip is ready to be put on the board again. So hopefully you learned something. This was the spikes and balls technique. I'm sure I'll use it again in another video, but in the meantime, that's another tool in your uh, tool belt to add some solder to some specific pins and add as much solder as you want, even more than you could with only surface tension alone. Thanks, have a good one.